pi is 3.14159265. But you came here for Pocket Ronnie, so please stay tuned. Okay, we're going to be doing factoring. Uh, what we're factoring was the opposite of foiling. Okay, when you foiled, you were multiplying two parentheses. Now we're going to factor everything into two parentheses. So we're looking at page 5A1, problem number two. This is the most, the easiest thing to factor where you have a positive and a positive. The first thing you do is look at the signs. When you're in a positive, when you have a positive, positive, I like to say you're in a positive world. The first thing you look for in factoring is can you factor anything out of the numbers? This is a coefficient of one, so you have one, three, two. You cannot factor anything out of the numbers, so you're ready to go to two parentheses. Positive, positive, you're in a positive world, so everything is positive. Then what you do is you look at the factors. The factors of x squared, 1x squared. x times an x gives you an x squared. Then you look at the factors of 2. The only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. It doesn't matter which parentheses are in since they're both the same sign. Mentally check this back in your head. Foil it back out and make sure you're going to get this middle term. First, first outside, inside, last x squared, then you get a 1x plus a 2x, which is a 3x, and then positive 2 times positive 1 is positive 2. So this is what that's like when you factor it out. Now, still on page 5a1, we're looking at problem 4. Now we're not in a positive world anymore. So again, look to see, can you factor something out? 1, 11, 30. No, you can't factor anything out, so you're ready to go to two parentheses. Here, factors of x squared, x, x. Okay. Now, I have a positive here. These last numbers will be multiplied to give me this, okay? A positive times a positive is a positive, but the fact that this is a negative tells me this will not be a positive and a positive, okay? A positive times a positive gives you a positive, but also a negative times a negative gives you a positive. So when this is negative and this is a positive, this tells you that both signs will be negative because a negative times a negative will give me a positive. Now you look at the, the factors of 30, okay? We have 2 times 15, 30 times 1, 5 times 6, 10 times 3, okay? I can see that I'm going to use 5 and 6 because I need a negative 6x. Adding a negative 5x gives me a negative 11x. Make sure that you get this middle term, okay? That's very, very important because what we're about to do next is very important that you factor correctly. So that's that. Now look at 5c6. So here we have a negative and a negative. I can't factor anything out, so I'm ready to go to two parentheses. This um, negative will help dictate these signs. How do I get a negative? A positive times a negative. Okay, a positive times a negative gives me a negative. Factors of x squared are x and x. Factors of 20, 20 times 1, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. Uh, did I miss anything? Well, I can tell I'm going to need 4 and 5 because this is a negative 1, okay? And the fact that one of these is positive and one is negative tells me I'm subtracting these, um, we'll be subtracting these inside terms. I need this to come out to be a negative, so this would be a negative 5 and that would be a positive 4. If I foiled it back out, it would be a negative 5x plus 4x minus 20 and these two terms right here gives me a negative 1. Okay, so if you need to check it by writing it out, please write it out. Otherwise, check it mentally in your head. Okay, now look at 5C4. We have coefficient in front of our x squared. The first thing you always look for is can you factor anything out? 4, 8, and 3. I cannot factor anything out of this, so I'm still ready to go to two parentheses. Positive, positive. I'm in a positive world, so everything is positive. Okay. Here, I look at the factors. Factors of 4 are 4 times 1, 2 times 2. I could be using either one of those. Here, the factors of 3 are only 3 times 1. I usually like to start with the one that only has one set of factors. Here, 3 only has one set of factors, so I know I'm going to have 3 and a 1 here. Now, it's just a matter of trial and error. There's no quick thing or no quick tip to tell you how to do this, okay? So, let's just try a 2x and a 2x. That's going to give me a 2x plus a 6x. Oh, hallelujah, that was the right pick to begin with. Okay, so that's going to work. But let me just say, what if we had picked 4 and 1? 
Okay, that would have given me a 4x plus 3x, and 4x plus 3x is 8, uh, 7x, and that's not this, so that won't work. Okay, even if we switch the numbers, 4 and 1, that gives me a 1x and a 12x. That would have been 13x. That still doesn't work. Okay, so 2 and 2, because if I multiply this out, that would be 4x squared plus 2x plus 6x plus 3. 2x plus 6x gives me the 8x. So this is the right way for that to be factored. All right, now let's look at 5c7. Again, when I see that there's a coefficient out in front, the first thing I always need to check for is can I factor something out. Looking at the numbers, 20, 10, 30, I can factor out a 10. Now look, they all have an x in them, x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared. So the most I can factor out is the smallest exponent. I can factor out an x squared. So if I factor out a 10x squared, then what's left here would be 2x squared plus x minus 3. If I go back and distribute, I should get this. 10x squared times 2x squared would be 20x to the fourth. This times this, 10x cubed. This times this, negative 30x squared. Okay, I always make sure I factored correctly. Now I'm going to keep factoring. Now I can factor this into two parentheses. Do not forget to carry this factor along with you. Do not lose that. 10x squared. Now I'm ready to factor to two parentheses. I have a coefficient out in front. I'm not in a positive world. This negative tells me I'm going to have a positive and a negative. I know I'm only going to be able to have a 3 and a 1 here. So in this, factors of 2 are only 2 and 1 but I gotta get myself a one here. Let's see if I did a two x here and an x here. I need a positive here. I'm gonna try this to be a positive and negative. That would give me a negative two x plus three x and that would give me a positive one x there. Okay, just to multiply it out for you. See that would be, the middle terms would be a negative two x and a positive three x. That's my middle terms. And that would give me a positive one. So this is the correct way to factor it. Okay, let's look at 5C8 over here. Anytime you see two terms and a subtraction sign, always look to see if it's difference of two squares, okay? How do you factor a difference of two squares? It's two parentheses, and then you take the square root of each one. In Algebra 2, each of these may not be a perfect square. These are a perfect square, but in Algebra 2, it doesn't have to be a perfect square. So taking the square root of x to the fourth, that'd be x squared, x squared. In difference of two squares, one's going to be a plus, one's a minus. They're going to look exactly the same, except the signs will be different. Square root of 16, 4. Now you keep factoring. Factor until you can't factor anymore. We do not know how to factor, or not know how, there is not a way to factor sum of two squares. Okay, this is a sum of two squares. That does not factor. Leave it just like that, but keep carrying it along. This is a difference of two squares again, so you can factor it again. Okay, here's this factor, and now we're gonna factor this into those two things. Taking the square root of x squared, x, difference of two squares, one's a plus, one's a minus. I said it minus, plus, doesn't matter. Take the square root of four, two, two. Now, none of these can be factored anymore, and so that's as far as it will factor. We are factoring down to prime factors, something that will not factor anymore.